Good morning, everybody. Happy Sunday again. Buckeye Piper. Trying to take full advantage of this weather today before it gets hot. I'll lose probably three hours this afternoon when the sun starts beating in. Um, I'll either have to suck it up or I'll have to pack it in. But thought I'd have another pipe. So smoked this last night, but I grabbed it again today because it's it's just a beast and the rustication's phenomenal. It's that OMS Devil Ants. If I can get it up to there, yeah, there we go. Just a great pipe. You cannot go wrong with the Noah Mess pipe. I will tell you that much. Just even love the top. I love how the top has that wood grain around it. It's phenomenal. In it, for the first time I've ever had this, and I, this has been in the cellar for oh, six, seven months. Sotlow, Burma Road. Now, I picked this up because there were some reviews, and I, it's really, you know, spur-of-the-moment purchase. But I had read a few things, and I can't remember where I read them, that this was, if you liked Frog Morton Cellar, you would love Burma Road. And they don't compare. Uh, unfortunately, not to say the Burma Road's bad. Uh, Burma Road, I've seen it called an aromatic, and I've seen it called uh, just a different style on an English, which is what I think it is. It's a different style on an English. It's an English with some vanilla and some rum topping, which is different. But it doesn't have the heavy Latakia. It's very mild. And it's not very heavy in the Latakia. So, you know, it's a good all-day smoke. So we'll do a first impressions maybe sometime. But anyhow, wanted to kick off kind of a new direction idea. Fun thing to do for the channel. Really been doing a lot of reading and talking and studying about leadership lately. Had a lot of folks, and the dogs are going to bark now when I'm talking. Had a lot of folks that have talked to me about previous videos and things they've liked and didn't like and questions. So I've always been intrigued by doing podcasts and this won't be a podcast. So I guess you might call it a vlog. But what I kind of like to do is... Talk about things which are important to the folks that watch my videos. So, if you have a question, and I'll preface this by saying I'm, you know, I've got 30 years experience doing it, but I'm not an expert. I don't know if anybody's an expert. But I've got a lot of experience to draw from and share with others. And uh, if that interests you, I would love to do so. So, what I thought I'd do is just open it up, and if you ever have a question, just post it on a video, and uh, whether I know the answer or not, I can kind of look it up, figure it out, apply it to leadership, and have some fun with it. I'm still going to do my 80s stuff, I'm still going to do my funny, crazy stuff, my scotch stuff, I'll still do all that, but I wanted to do something uh, a little more structured on leadership. This first one today I'm going to talk about is legacy, leadership legacy. What kind of legacy are you leaving? And as a leader, it's it's um, what you leave behind more so than, than, you know, what you do when you're at work. You know, the, to me, the mark of a true leader always is if that leader is on vacation or out sick or transfers, moves, leaves, whatever. What's left behind is structured, disciplined process, flow left behind, or is it chaos and nobody really knows what is going on? And I've dealt with both over the years. So 
you know, picking up the pieces is never fun when you've got a leader that's a micromanager and they do everything themselves. And, you know, in the moment, it's right. Everything is getting done. When that leader leaves, you've got nothing but problems because you're picking up. Nobody knows what to do. They were always micromanaged and told what to do. The mark of an excellent leader is when they're, again, not there and everything flows and you don't even notice they're not there. I learned this early on. And a lot of folks are scared to teach everything they know to the folks on their team. They're scared because they're insecure and they think that if I teach everything I know to my team, my team won't need me. Well, let me share a, a quick story to show that's just not true. So I was probably in leadership at this time, maybe two or three years. And I had a team that was, a, it was a, a startup team, uh, all new, all hungry, wanting to learn stuff. So I took the time and I taught everybody a different piece of the business, all the stuff that I would do. I had folks that could do the morning numbers and open the shift and do the startup meetings. And I'd have folks that could close the shift and do the nightly numbers. I had folks that could run every report I needed to run. And, you know, if I was ever on vacation or something, they didn't miss a beat. Where this hit home to me is one day we're in startup and I'm doing the notes and talking about, hey, I'm going to do this and help with this. And one of them made a comment like, "We no, we don't even need you anymore. Just get us started. Give us our assignments. And hell, we can even do that. Just tell us what needs done and leave us be. And this was a very high performing team. So I tried it. I told them what I needed, shared everything, and they already kind of knew what was needed. They ran the business. They came together as a team, 25, 26 of them, and they ran the entire business. They didn't need me anymore. Now, I say that. There were some things that are confidential that they couldn't do. You know, with dressing people, holding people accountable, um, awards, commendations, special things. They couldn't do. So they still needed me a little bit. But as far as the business goes, it was transparent. But guess what that did for me? That freed me up to be able to go and learn other aspects of the business from other leaders. So I took advantage of it, and my team was humming. I went and learned how to run another team. And then I went and learned how to run another team. And just continued to build my knowledge. So by empowering and lifting up my team and leaving that legacy to where they ran their business, they were more productive, more happy, didn't need me telling them what to do. They knew where to get me. If they needed me, they'd call me on the radio. But not only did, did this help them in their personal growth, it helped me in my personal growth. And it's just an all-around win. So when I talk about, or you hear me talk about legacy, what are you leaving behind? How's the team that you're leading structured? And this is applies to not just business, this could apply to a Cub Scout pack. This could apply to anything. Uh, to some extent, maybe even relationships. If you find yourself that you have to do everything for your team and make every decision, which I have some teams now, that that's the case, you have to fix that. And it's not an easy fix. I equate it to turning an, an aircraft carrier. You don't turn an aircraft carrier on a dime. You can't fix bad habits or, or learned habits overnight. It takes a while.
in some of these big operations it takes years to, to undo. But it can be done. It can be done through empowerment, structure, guidance, direction, accountability. Oh no, there's that accountability word that everybody freaks out when they hear. Accountability is not a bad thing, folks. Accountability doesn't always mean hitting somebody over the head with a, um, you know, a write-up. That's not what it means. It means taking responsibility for something, owning something. That's another topic for another day, so I'm kind of going down another road. But legacy, think about that. With those that you're responsible for and those that you're leading or managing or mentoring or whatever. Have you empowered them? Does the business fall apart or does the Cub Scout pack fall apart when you're not? And Cub Scout pack might be a stretch, right? Because those are little kids. But does your organization fall apart when you're not there? Maybe you're a PTO leader. Does everybody just look for you to make the decision? And if you're not there, nothing gets done. That's a problem. It's a leadership problem, not a people problem. It's a leadership problem. So look at your legacy. And uh, how do you build it? How do you recover from it? You know, again, I've given you some tips. If this is something that hits, hits you near home, research it. But uh, that's how you get through it. Anyhow, just want to jump off here. First video in the series. I've done some other stuff, but I uh, want to open it up. If you have a specific question about a specific topic, and I'll be honest. I, again, I don't know it all. Don't claim to. Don't even know if I want to. Uh, if I can't speak intelligently on it or if I've not experienced it, I'll just I'll get with you one-on-one -on -one and just it'll be a pass. I, you know, there'll be other people that can probably help you. So, but this kind of stuff allows me to sit out here, relax, smoke a pipe, work things out in my own head, reinforce lessons I've learned, and maybe help somebody out. And if you've watched the video and it's helped you, give me a thumbs up down there. So shoot me your ideas, comments, questions. We'll look for the next video. And uh, want to make it interactive. Y'all have a great day. I'll be around all day. Catch you on House Party. Catch you on Zoom. Catch you on wherever. Be watching videos, podcasts, doing some reading today. Uh, drinking plenty of water. And that'll be a video for another day. But I have found that a lot of water and hydration is great for the mood. Anyhow, folks, wishing you all the blessings in the world. Take care of each other. Pay it forward. We'll catch you later. Have a good one.